We've got some new horsepower for a classic Camaro on today's show, so stay where you are. Today on Horsepower TV. It's out with the old, in with the new. ZC4, that is. An engine upgrade that includes fast burn heads, a new cooling system, and high performance exhaust. Before we test the rear wheel horsepower results of the 70s Z28. Chuck puts his money where his seat is with an upgrade in pockets. Plus some cold hard facts about drag racing in our Horsepower Race of the Week. So hang on for Horsepower TV. Hey, welcome to the shop and our feast of F-body horsepower. Man, it looks like Joe's already got himself a handful here with his 84 Trans Am. Now, it's powered by a 383 small block stroker, and it's also got a Wyand 871 blower and a couple of BG modified Holly carbs. Now, tell me, Joe, how is that test drive? <laughs> oh, great, man. This Firebird's got plenty of firepower. And you know, it's just another example of why the F-Body is a perfect platform for an engine upgrade. <laughs> They'll accept everything from a V6 to a big block V8, with just about any kind of transmission you want to put behind it. Yeah, now today we're going to give my old Z28 a new bullet by swapping out that tired 350 for this GM Performance Parts ZZ4 crate engine. Now, you may recognize this thing from a few weeks back when we dynoed it here in the shop. After adding a set of fast burn heads and GM's hot cam, hey, we cranked out 448 horsepower. That's quite a step up from this stocker that just makes 360. Now, I've already disconnected the battery, so the next step in getting the old engine out is removing the fuel line here and the carburetor. Then the passenger side header, ignition, the fan shroud, and the radiator. Well, I got the transmission out and the motor mounts loose. I guess the next thing is to lower the car so we can snatch the motor. Yeah, hold on a second. Let me get the clutch linkage. All right. Okay, Got it? yeah, that's it. All right, I think we're clear. Lots of room over here. Okay. We told you earlier this ZZ4 has been upgraded with fast burn heads, and well, here's what we mean by that. The 62cc combustion chamber has a tight heart-shaped design that induces a swirling effect for a more efficient burn rate and about a 10 to 1 compression ratio with these flat top pistons. Now the valves bar a page right out of the race book. These two inch intakes are hollow stemmed and the 155 exhaust valves are sodium filled. Of course, with a high tech engine like ours, hey, we don't want to use a low tech ignition. Now that Camaro originally came with a point type distributor and we're going to go ahead and replace it with this blueprinted HEI unit from Excel. Now aside from the additional output, it also has this high performance cap with brass inserts and a close tolerance rotor for maximum voltage transfer to the plug wires. Now the wires themselves are Excel's 8 millimeter spiral cores for RF suppression with minimal voltage drop. The clutch can go on next. We're using an 11 inch street strip setup we got from Hayes. It includes this organic disc and a diaphragm style pressure plate. This will give us easy pedal action and maximum grip. Pretty easy on our budget too. Now, I'm going to use this special tool here to line up the disc while we bolt on that plate. By the way, it's a good idea to have your flywheel resurfaced or replaced so your new clutch will work positively and smoothly. Our new one, by the way, came from Hayes also. Well, that ZZ4 is a high RPM engine, so I wouldn't be surprised if occasionally we buzz it to the high side of 6,500 RPM. Now, to contain the clutch, we're going to use this blowproof bell housing from Lakewood, and while we're at it, we're going to replace the stock throwout fork with this heavy duty piece that we found in their catalog, along with a new throwout bearing. Oh, and here's a little tip for you. To prevent wear right here at the pivot point, I'm going to put a little dab of grease before we slide it in on the ball. Okay, good timing. I just got through torquing the plate down to 55 foot-pounds. Looks good. Now, let's see if I can line this thing up on the dowel pins. There we go. Hey, we're just about ready to drop this engine in, but first check something out. We also got some new engine mounts from Lakewood we like. 
They're made of rubber, which is good for isolating engine noise, but they have these steel fingers here, which will catch this tab just in case the rubber ever fails us. That's a pretty good feature. Hey, there's no denying the performance improvements that you get with a set of headers. Problem is, these old ones that we took off were some rusty leakers that were just about to fall apart. Now, we're going to replace them with these Hooker Super Comps, and they feature one and three quarter inch equal length primaries with a three inch collector. And to make sure that they stay pretty for a long time to come, we ordered ours with a ceramic coating. The best time to lay the headers in place is while the engine's still out, and well, we're going to use these bungee cords to help keep them out of the way. Okay, I guess we're ready for this baby now, right? No, I tell you what, I'm ready to take a little bit of a break. Now, while we set this thing in place, why don't you hold your place and we'll be right back. What, a couple more feet yeah, there? Yeah, a couple more feet. Here we go. All righty. Later in the show, we'll see how much rear wheel horsepower the Camaro makes with its new ZZ4 Bullet and show you how a new set of buckets is an easy bolt-on for cool looks and comfort. For the latest news on Horsepower TV, check us out online at horsepowertv.com. Hi, welcome back to the Horsepower Shop and our F-Body engine swap. Well, we got this ZZ4 bolted into Chuck's 70Z28. While I drop in the distributor, let's shift to my partner who's working on a better way to shift gears. A Hearst shifter was factory equipment in the Z28, but here's the problem with it. They insisted on using these rubber bushings here on the shifter head to reduce noise and vibrations inside the car. Now, it works, but it'll give you a sloppy shifter and the potential for missed gears. Now, we're going to replace it with this Hearst Competition Plus shifter, and it uses these nylon bushings here to tighten things up. Well, that about does it. All that's left now is to check for proper operation. Solid. Well, to make sure that 450 horse engine operates at proper temperature, we'll upgrade the cooling system too. In fact, we're going to jettison this stock copper brass radiator for this aluminum dual row one inch tube cooler from Be Cool. Now it's a direct drop in and the company claims it'll cool engines making up to a thousand horsepower. Of course, we've got to move more air through the radiator to do that. So we'll also install this small dual fan setup with an integrated shroud. Now, to make sure it's mounted securely, we've got these optional billet aluminum brackets. Once the brackets are attached to the radiator, drop on the fans and snug them in place. Okay, now all that's left is the wiring. We got our fans with a thermostatically controlled switch that cuts on when the water reaches 180 degrees. Hey, just because we lost our stock fan, that doesn't mean we don't need an accessory drive. So to complete our cooling system upgrade, we're going to use this high water flow pulley system from March Performance. Now, this smaller water pump pulley is actually going to speed it up to improve circulation, and the rest of the kit includes these billet brackets and stainless steel mounting hardware. The carburetor goes on next. Now, I know we dynoed this ZZ4 with a double pumper, but for street use, we want to go with this Holley 750 vacuum secondary carb. Now, I know we'll give up some in the horsepower department, but we'll more than make up for it in drivability and mileage. Now, once it's bolted up, we'll get this Camaro on the lift. Well, now we can go ahead and reinstall this Muncie. And hey, if it looks a little bit different to you, it's because I've removed this handle so the rest of the shifter assembly will fit up through the floor opening. Well, that went into place pretty easily now. Once I get the trans mount tightened up, we'll be ready for the drive shaft. We're upgrading just about everything to get the most out of this engine swap, and our last link is the exhaust.
we decided to go with this full three inch mandrel bench system we got from Torque Tech. And well, as you can see, there's quite a difference. Man, that ought to free up some horsepower. Now, let me tell you about the mufflers that we're going to use. They're Dynomax Super Turbo 3s, and they call them that because they're three inches in, three inches out, and they're packed with fiberglass for good sound deadening. Now, once we get the rest of the pipes in place, we'll go ahead and weld them in. But tell you what, you stay welded to your seat. We're going to take a short break, and we'll be right back. Later on, we'll head to Columbus, where the weather's great for snowmobiling, but what about streetcar racing? It makes for track conditions uh, to be very unsafe. We'll find out. Stay tuned. Hi, welcome back to the shop. We made 448 horsepower on our engine dyno with this CZ4. Now let's see what we get at the rear wheel. Ready when you are. So how'd we do? Just a tad over 330 horsepower. Hey, not bad. Now, keep in mind, this is rear wheel horsepower. Plus, we swapped out that double pumper for a vacuum secondary carb. And we've got a street style ignition and a full exhaust. So anything that we've lost in horsepower, we more than made up for in drivability. Yeah, there's a lot more to drivability than just horsepower. You know, you're really going to be sitting pretty after this next project. Come on, let's get this thing off the dyno jet. You know, those old muscle cars might have been fast, but they were sure uncomfortable. Stock seats like this were great for the short runs, but hey, in the long haul, <laughs> they were a real backbreaker. Now, today, we're going to bolt in a set of custom seats into my Z28. These are the Sport XRs from Carrillo. As this cutaway shows, they've got plenty of padding, nice deep side bolsters for good lateral support, and recline mechanisms. Now, they also come in almost any color and material, including leather. Now, the secret to making these sports seats work in the Camaro is the bottom seat brackets. Now, Carrillo offers these from Wedge Engineering, but they've got them for just about any other application as well. They just bolt up to the bottom of the seat frame. Now, you'll notice they're left and right side, so you want to keep the seat adjuster knob to the outside of the seat. Now, with the brackets secure, go ahead and slide the tracks all the way forward. That way you can mount them up using the forward floor mounting holes. Then slide the seat forward so you can get at the back bolt. Man, I could cruise in this Camaro all day now, and it only took me about an hour and a little over 1200 bucks. Now, don't leave your seat. There's more horsepower ahead. Next, a trip to cold Columbus for at least some hot flashbacks of NSCA racing that lead up to the year's final competition. Horsepower TV's Race of the Week is brought to you by CarParts.com. Everything for cars, trucks, vans, and SUVs. This weekend, our race of the week has brought us to the National Trail Dragway in Columbus, Ohio for some hot competition in the NSCA season finale. But it's cold here. How cold? Well, check the track temperature. <laughs> 40 degrees, and it has to be 60 or more for ideal racing conditions. We've got a long way to go. It makes for track conditions uh, to be very unsafe, and, and a lot of these cars uh, especially the nitrous cars. They have progressive nitrous. They leave with one horsepower amount and they increment all the way down the track. So we have to have an optimum track surface for safety. Yesterday's qualifying was canceled due to rain. And here on Sunday, well, the unseasonably cold icy weather is perhaps better suited to skating than drag racing. So what's the plan? With uh, ambient air temperature around 42, 43 degrees and track temperature hovering in the upper 30s and low 40s, the prospects for getting any track temperature with no sunlight are pretty bad. We're going to wait, see if the, if the sky clears, but uh, quite frankly, it doesn't look very promising. While waiting on the weatherman to see what's ahead for today, what do you say we look back on some of the competition in warmer weather that brought us up to these finals?
Throughout the year, the National Streetcar Association's new series was catching on like wildfire among serious grassroots racers and fans. And events like this one in Bowling Green, Kentucky was powerful proof that the NSCA had a hot ticket on its hands. The event featured pro mod competition where the finals came down to a neck and neck shootout between veteran Billy Harper and his Barracuda and Harold Martin in his fuel injected Firebird. In the final race, Martin soared to a close win with his 656 ET at 213 miles an hour. But the outlaw and pro street stalwarts gave us just as good a show. In fact, Vinny Pacifico and his nitrous-powered 63 vet showed his championship form winning the outlaw class. While Tony Gentile edged out mentor Pat Busey to take pro street with a 698. weeks later, the NSCA invaded the Motor City region without the Pro Mod cars, but with plenty of speed and thrills, thanks to Pro Street and Outlaw Racers fighting for a share of the championship. For extra hot thrills, Danny Burmer and Richard Hutchins brought fans to their feet with their wheel standing trucks and supercharged match races. We originally started out with just injected motors, now we've got superchargers on them with injection. We run alcohol for fuel. And actually, we're running over over a thousand horsepower, both me and Danny, and uh, we uh, have more horsepower most of the time than we need. But you need that horsepower to get you out of trouble a lot of times. Then Benny Pacifico cinched the Outlaw Street crown with this win over Paul Catoni. Pat Musi won the Pro Street final, but runner-up Danny Scott piled up enough points to head to Columbus with the lead. Speaking of which, it's still cold here. And after a futile wait for a break and a forecast for rain later, well, Tony DePillo held a driver's meeting to announce the weekend's big season finale had been canceled. I think it's fair. I think it's a very smart decision. I think it is unsafe to go down that track. I made one qualifying pass, turned the car sideways. So, um, and it's even colder now, and I think the man is very smart in making the correct decision. Well, believe it or not, there are some things to celebrate today, like points championship. Danny Scott, Pro Street champ. Congratulations. Thank you very much, Joe. Joe we've, uh, we've worked a long, long, hard summer here trying to get to this level, and uh, the crew has done an excellent job here. Unfortunately, we didn't get to race today because of weather, but, uh, but uh, God's been good all year here, and we just really appreciate everything that's happened. Uh, thanks to NSCA for this fine organization that we've been able to race in and the sponsors that have all been involved. Meanwhile, while racers come to the track to race, it's better to leave in one piece than chance of crash or worse. So it was time to head home, reflect on the season past while trying to build a better, quicker combination for the one ahead. So there you have it. The fat lady gets to sing early and the name of the tune is Pack It Up and Go Home. But we'll have another race of the week next week and it'll be a hot one. Join the Horsepower TV crew March 18th through 19th at the NSCA Silver Dollar Shootout at Silver Dollar Raceway in Reynolds, Georgia. Now, Horsepower's Hot Parts, brought to you by Summit Racing Equipment, your source for high-performance parts for 30 years. Timing is everything, especially when you're dialing in your cam for maximum horsepower. Well, now you can get precise cam timing with this AccuGear gear drive setup from Edelbrock. Now, the fully machined and heat-treated gears fit under a stock timing cover, and the offset bushings give you up to eight degrees of cam indexing. Now, they're available for big and small block Chevys, as well as small block Fords, and hey, the price is affordable too, starting at $160. Speaking of Fords, Mustang 5.0 fans will get a charge out of this. A denser fuel charge, that is. Now, this special intake manifold spacer comes from Moroso and it's CNC machined from a special phenolic material that fits between the intake manifold and the plenum to help isolate heat. Now, it comes with all the hardware that you need to complete the installation, and all that extra horsepower will only set you back about 55 bucks. Old and new technology come together in this electronic distributor from Joe Hunt. Now it features the latest electronics inside a classic magneto housing and it's fully self-contained including the coil. Plus it's got a simple two-wire hookup. 
Now the aluminum body is also available in red, black and blue anodized with drives to fit most popular engine applications. The color coordinated wires are another option and hey, pricing on this nostalgic sparker start at about 500 bucks. Well, that's it for Hot Parts. Here's a look at next week's show. We'll fill an old swap meet 12 boat rear end with a parcel of new parts, including a ring and pinion set and a posi unit. We'll show you how to make your own custom door panel, then load our 32 three window coupe with a cool stealthy sound system. We'll follow some kings of compact drag racing to Florida for some unbelievable six second quarter mile thrills and chill. And remember, high performance fun is what this show is all about. For information about the products used in today's show and more, check us out online at horsepowertv.com. Horsepower TV is an RTM production.